All right. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Aquarium Online Academy. My name is Tina. I'm one of the educators here at Aquarium of the Pacific, and we're very excited to be joining you today. We have a very exciting program. We have our Crafty Critters program today. So we're going to be talking about different shapes of fish, what we notice on our fish, what they look like, and we're actually going to be creating our very own fish for ourselves. So right off the bat, I'm going to say we will need some crafting supplies. I have with me a couple of different sheets of paper. I have colored construction paper, but if you don't have access to that right now, you can absolutely use plain paper and of course color that in as well. That being said, we're going to need some utensils to color. So if you want pens, markers, crayons, pencils, colored pencils, anything that you would like, we can use those today. I will also be using some scissors as well as some tape. So feel free to go ahead and get all of those materials together so that we can craft together a little bit later on in our program. But I am not alone in my studio today. I have my very good friend Elena with me here today. She's going to be controlling the wonderful magic that you see behind me on our screen. Now, during our program, if you are watching on August 23rd at 9 a.m., you are more than welcome to interact with us live by texting in right over here at this number 562-286-1838 feel free to give us a call or give us a text if you have any questions observations or if you just want to say hello if you just want to say good morning but if you are not watching us live and you are tuning in at another point in time please feel free to still ask us questions or try to get involved a little bit more with using this Email right below me over here, live at lbaop.org. And that's if you are not watching today, August 23rd at 9 a.m., if you're watching at a later date. So we're going to be keeping all this info up on screen as of right now. But we're going to go ahead and get started and talk about what we're seeing behind us. This is one of the habitats that we have here at the aquarium. You're going to take a notice and see all the different kinds of fish in here. I would love for us to warm up our scientist brains and take some observations. So observations are something that scientists use to begin to wonder, begin to ask questions about what they're seeing in front of them. So go ahead, I'm going to step off screen for just a minute. I would love for you to start thinking of things that we're noticing in this habitat. It could be colors. It could be how many different kinds of fish are in here, what these fish look like, what colors are those fish, maybe even some shapes too. What shapes are we noticing with a bunch of the fish that we have here? And what shapes maybe are the corals behind them in their habitat? And again, feel free to call us or text us in any observations that you might make. Take one minute right now to just <laughs> to go through and make those observations. And we'll come back in a little bit. Alrighty, I know I'm noticing right now one of our parrotfish is coming on over to say hello. Oh, the parrotfish is one of my favorite fish inside of this habitat. I'm seeing some gorgeous colors on them as well. Ooh, I'm also seeing a couple of different kinds of fish swimming around. If you're seeing a lot of maybe bright colors, I would, I would absolutely agree with you. Coral itself are very colorful, and the fish that live within them that call our coral reefs home they also want to be those same matching colors so that they can blend into their habitat. I am seeing a lot of reds. I'm also seeing some orange colors. I know up here we have some lovely oranges. We even have an orange all the way up here. This one over here, this giant purple coral is gorgeous. We have some sand corals down here that are more of a pinkish color as well. But our fish, I'm noticing, I got one all the way up here swimming out, out of the frame. Oh, one just went behind some coral over there. A couple of them are striped in different colors. This one is maybe a little bit of a black and pink. Ooh, this one is gorgeous. I'm seeing a yellow dot right on top of their head, as well as some blue stripes. I would love for my parrotfish to come back. I wanna, I wanna give them a little spotlight for a second because they are gorgeous colors all over their body. Maybe we can take a closer look at a picture of a parrotfish really quick. Ah, oh, fantastic. Everyone look at that smile. Isn't that just the cutest little thing? Oh my goodness. So in this picture, I'm seeing a lot of blues. I'm also seeing some orange kind of around their mouth area and even around, ooh, around their scales too. Now this smile, I know it's adorable. I did point it out simply because it is a beautiful smile, but it's a very important smile. This is a really cool adaptation that our parrot fish have. They have this beak, almost like a parrot, which is how they get their name. 
to help them munch on coral. These guys love to munch, 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 munch on some coral pieces, and that really tough beak part helps them do that. Now, before I get too ahead of myself, we all know our parrotfish, it's a fish, right? But there are a couple of things on this animal that make them a fish. So go ahead and take a second to look at just this picture and tell me what you notice on our fish over here. Oh, this is an even better picture. So what on this fish makes it a fish that all other kinds of fish have in common? Hmm, noticing a couple of different things. Maybe you're saying fins, right? All of our fish have fins. We have two fins on our side, our pectoral fins. We have this gorgeous tail fin over here. You know, this is kind of an interesting shape too. I'm gonna say this is almost shaped like the letter U. We also have their dorsal fin that goes all the way down their back as well. So yeah, fins are definitely one thing, one characteristic that fish need to have in order to be considered a fish. Absolutely. There are maybe a couple more things. Let's see. Oh, something else that's a really, really unique thing to fish are these. All of these almost kind of, oh, I don't know if I can trace it. I don't know if my hand's that steady. Gorgeous little diamonds all over their body, right? They're kind of in a shape of a diamond, a little point on either end. So these are their scales. All fish have scales in order to be considered a fish. You gotta have some scales. Now there's also one more thing right after their scales. Whoop. Whoop. There it is right here. This is what helps them breathe underwater. Does anyone know what that part of the fish is called? A couple other animals have it too. If you said gills, you would be completely correct, my friend. If you are a fish, you need to have scales. You need to have fins. And of course, you need to have gills. Fish also lay eggs, but for right now we're going to focus on their characteristics so that we can better make a fish for our craft in a little bit. I do want you all to take a look at what shape our parrotfish is themselves. Have we seen this shape before? Does it look familiar to us? If not, then we might be able to discover it together. I am noticing that at the front part of their face over here is kind of pinched out a little bit. And so is the back of their body too, their tail and their mouth. Kind of curve out just like that, but the middle of their body is a lot wider than the rest of their body. This kind of reminds me of a football. What would you say? Would anyone agree with that? I would certainly say so. So this football shape is common with a couple of different animals as well. Even sharks are this shape too. But isn't this just the cutest little football you've ever seen? I completely agree. I wish all footballs were this colorful. Now we also have other kinds of fish that are different shapes as well. Let's see if we can pull up any other kind of fish and see what's different. Ooh, this is very different from what we just saw. First, let's take a look at those colors, right? What colors do you see, my friends? Hmm, I'm seeing a lot of white, got these gorgeous white stripes. But in between those white stripes, what colors are we seeing over here? Yellow. Very good, my friends. We're seeing some yellows and whites. And whoop, whoop, whoop. where is it? There it is, right over here. We have a really, really cute black dot. That is a false eye. So this is what our butterfly fish use to trick predators into thinking that they're going a different direction than they're actually going, which is very, very unique. So they have a little black dot. They have white and yellow stripes as well. Now take a look at this shape. Hmm, this is a very interesting kind of a shape. I'm already seeing that their mouth is much different than our parrotfish, right? They have more of a, a tube shaped mouth than anything. And this is what's gonna help them eat individual little pieces of food that get stuck within corals or within any other smaller areas. Now again, with this shape, hmm, the best shape that I would compare it to would be a rounded out square. What do we, because we kind of see four sides, right? On the bottom, their face, and all the way up at the top over here. I'd say if a square were to have rounded out corners, rounded out edges, this would be the perfect example. Now I know we can't see the front of this fish, but if you were to look this fish, straight on that way, you'll notice that it is 
it is very, very flat on its sides. And again, that's another really unique adaptation to allow them to slide in and out in between the corals to help find their food. Wonderful. There is one particular kind of fish that I would absolutely love to talk about. It is gorgeous in color. It is a solid orange color. Does anyone know what I'm talking about? Oh my goodness. This is the Garibaldi, my friends. So all of you living in California, as we are in Southern California currently, this is actually California's state fish. And not to say anything, but they do have gorgeous blue eyes like someone else I know. Anyway, our Garibaldi is, of course, a lovely orange, but I'm seeing a lot of different shapes in here, too. First thing I want to point out is this tail. I think we all know what shape this is over here. If we kind of turned it around on its side just a little bit, it would look just like a little heart. That's what I see. Do we all see the heart on the tail of the Garibaldi? And we are noticing those same characteristics as well. Our Garibaldi has a tail. They have fins. They also have their gills. Their gill sets are right underneath, right over here. And if you look really, really close, you'll be able to see those same little diamonds all over their body. Those are going to be their scales. And that's how we know that we have a fish on our hands. We have a gorgeous fish on our hands. Now, if you look at our Garibaldi in real life, in one of the habitats that we have here, because we do have a couple in our blue ca cavern gallery, you'll notice that they are kind of rounded out, almost like a puffed out circle. So if you were to envision a circle right in front of you, it won't really turn into a sphere, but it's a circle that's kind of 3D puffed out just a little bit. They're a dense circle. I'll say that they're a very dense circle shape. But their mouth does kind of come out to a little bit of a point over here. I will say, really fun fact about Garibaldi is that they are awesome protectors of their habitat, of their homes. They are this bright orange color to warn off anyone that might want to come into their home and disturb their habitat. Their habitat would be the lovely kelp forest that we have all over Southern California. Now, my friends, we are going to attempt to make our Garibaldi for our fish craft today, but you can choose any kind of fish that you'd like, or feel free to choose your very, draw your very own fish if you would like as well. I'm gonna go ahead and switch on over to my document camera really quick so I can show you what materials I will be working with today. Alrighty, so over here, I have a couple of different pieces of construction paper. I have my orange, let me see if I can zoom out a little bit. There we go. I have my orange, this is for my gear vault body and then I also have a strip of blue I'm trying to match the color of their eyes so I'm gonna draw a little eyes on this paper and cut it out and then I know our Garibaldi is all orange but just to spice things up a little bit I'm gonna give them some orange fins as well what we're going to be making is oh, let me get my example out for you a fish just like this so we can see what shape our fish is we have the fins, we have the rest. Oh, oh my goodness. I will put them back on in a little bit. I got too excited, but that's okay because we're gonna make our own. How we are going to make that fan is by folding our paper. So once you have your paper out in front of you, feel free to hold it hamburger style or hot dog. It's completely up to you. Start folding it right along the edge. Maybe about that much. I'm going to fold it up this way. And then what I'm going to do after this is actually flip the paper over just like this and then fold it again. I'm going to continue to do this all the way down my paper so I have crinkles oop, that look just like that. All right, so I'm going to fold it, flip it over, fold it this way again, and then continue to go back and forth. You can also feel free to make these folds a little smaller if you'd like, or a little bit bigger. That is completely up to you. I am going to be taking up the entire paper, but if you just want to do a half of your paper, that's all right too. My lines might not be exactly even, but that's okay. Although no fish is perfect, they are all beautiful. So we have our folds. Perfect. Just like this. You'll have a lovely little accordion as well. Now what we're going to do is pinch the middle and fold this fan in half. Doesn't matter which way you want to fold it, you can feel free to choose your own, choose your own angle. Oop, 
the paper is a little thick. It's a little tough for me to fold. So you will have this kind of a uh, rounded out triangle shape. To connect these two pieces, I'm just going to use a regular old piece of tape. You are more than welcome to staple it. You're more than welcome to glue it as well. If you like stapling, it might be a little bit, little bit easier. I'm just going to tape the end together just like that. Wonderful. I have my fan or my lovely shape of my fish. What I'm going to do next is work on the fins. So using my yellow, I'm going to take my marker, just using a plain old black marker, and what I'm going to draw is this shape that we're seeing right over here. It kind of matches, ooh, if I tilt it this way, it kind of matches the same shape that we have for our fish, right? So I will make a line, just like this, like the letter L, and then I will connect both sides of the letter L, just like that. And I'm going to repeat it because our fish do have two fins. And connect. Now feel free to draw a little design on your fins if you would like. I'm going to do this and make some lines. Do that. Make some lines as well. Alrighty. Now before I put my marker away, I am actually going to draw out my eyes as well. That way I can cut everything at once. I'm going to draw a circle and a little black dot for their eye and then I'm going to do another circle and another little black dot for their eyes alrighty now I'm going to cut them all out so I can start putting them on my Garibaldi now again my friends you do not have to use construction paper you are more than welcome to use pieces of scrap paper, white paper, and then color it in whatever color you would like. And again, we do not have to make a Garibaldi just like me. You can make any kind of fish. You can make the parrotfish that we saw today, maybe even that butterfly fish. While I cut these out, I'm going to ask my friend Elena to pull up other kinds of fish just so we can get inspired. Let's see what we have. Oh, my goodness. Just look at this little face, my friends. This is one of our balloon fish. They are incredible. Right now, I know they look like a little potato, right? But I'd say that's a, that's a pretty good shape to compare them to, right? Maybe an oval shape. And what's really unique about our uh, balloon fish as well, our puffer fish, is that they can puff up. Now, if you ever see one, you never want to try to make them puff up because that means that they're really nervous or that they want to defend themselves when they puff up. Puff up. What they do is they inhale all of the water around them. It kind of shifts around their organs a little bit just so they can make that really, really big, uh, giant sphere shape with their bodies. So that's not a very good, fun experience for them. So if you do ever see our balloon fish, I know we have a couple here at the aquarium, we always want to respect their space and not try to make them puff up. Awesome shape. What other kinds of fish can we see today? Oh my goodness. This is an incredible fish. Sometimes we actually see them right here near Long Beach. These are called our mola molas, otherwise known as our ocean sunfish. I know, I know you're what you're thinking. What in the world kind of a shape is this? Well, if I were to compare this to a shape, I would say that these fins down here, these are very, very long triangles, right? They reach all the way, all the way up on either side of the body, but let's talk about that body. What do we think this giant shape over here is? I don't know, what do we think? Hmm. I would say I could see a stretched out circle. I could see a little bit of an oval. What's also really unique about this fish as well is that much like our butterfly fish, if you were to look at straight on, directly, straight eye contact, it too is incredibly, incredibly flat. Alrighty, my friends. See, we discovered even more fish today. We're gonna switch back over to my document camera because I have cut out both pieces for my fish already. Just like that. Wonderful. I am going to go ahead and try to tape them onto my fish. Again, feel free to use a stapler. Feel free to use anything else, a glue stick. I made a little roll of tape 
just like this, and I'm going to put it on the back of my eyes. Boop. You got one eye there. And then make another little roll of tape. Put one on the other side. Might not stay perfect, but that's okay. For our fins, what's great about these fans is that you can just boop, place your fins in. Don't really have to secure them all that well. They pretty much stay, oop, there we go. Pretty much stay there all by themselves. I don't know if I can get it right in the same spot as I had it last time. Maybe not, that's okay. I'll just put them in right over there. Fantastic. I think we're missing one more really important piece. Let's take a look and see, back to our Garibaldi picture. What am I missing about my Garibaldi? I have the eyes. I have these front fins. I don't know, do I have a back fin? I don't think I have a tail fin, my friends. So if you would like, this is another option for us to do together. You can make a back tail fin. And how I'm going to do that, I am actually going to use uh, my leftover scrap of yellow. And we're gonna repeat the same process as we did before. We are going to fold this just like a fan. We're gonna start folding an edge up this way, flipping the paper over, folding it back down the other direction. So just continue to do that on a separate piece of paper, on any other color that you would like as well. And now I know the back tail fin of our Garibaldi's are not yellow, neither are their fins, but since this is my fun craft, I have decided to make them orange and yellow. This one is a, it's a rare kind of a Garibaldi. Alrighty. So now that I have my fan again, I once again will fold it in half. There we go. And then tape the edges together. There we go. That's better. Now we have our tail. And now we have our fish. Feel free to connect this any way you'd like. I don't know if my tape will stay very well, but we can certainly try to tape it all together. Now I might actually try, ooh, I will do that. I'm going to try to cut this in the shape of our Garibaldi tail. So let's actually go back to our Garibaldi tail really, really fast and talk once more again about what shape it is. All right, so I have, I have this. It's not gonna show up very well, but <laughs> I have this. How do I make it into this right over here? Hmm, I think what I can do is actually, let's come back to my document camera really quick. Let's see if I can grab my marker. Because we want to make a heart, right? So with a very light marker, I can make little lines about where I want to cut. Then again, it might not be perfect, but it's worth a try. Let's see if I can cut this around a little bit and around out the edges. And again, you do not have to do this, my friends. I was just trying to make it more accurate to, <laughs> to our Garibaldi. Okay, it's definitely not perfect, but it's something. <laughs> it is certainly something. Let me round out this edge really quick. All right. Not too bad. I know this fold kind of looks a little, little funky. There we go. All right, now our last final piece together of our fish. We are going to do another little roll of tape. I will put it behind my tail, just like that, and see if I can tape it on to my fish there. Oh my goodness, everyone. What do we think about our funky little Garibaldi. I think they look fantastic. Get it? Because it's a fan. <laughs> Alrighty, my friends. What's also great about this crab is that you can feel free to hole punch 
or tape a piece of string to the top and hang it like a little ornament if you would like as well. Alrighty, my friends, let's head back to maybe our coral predators or any other habitat that we have here to take a look. Oh, wonderful, my friends. So I'm going to go ahead and have Elena put back up our uh, call line, our text line, and our email line as well. If you do have any questions at all, feel free to type on in right here, 562-286-1838. And again, you can feel free to email as well if you don't have access to a telephone at the moment. It is live at lbaop.com. We do have some more time, which is fantastic. I do want to take a look at a couple more different kinds of fish. So let's see. Let's see what one Elena can surprise us with. Your choice. Oh my goodness. I always keep one with me. Over here, we have our lovely clownfish. Now they are also living in another kind of an animal called an anemone. That is their habitat. Our clownfish, I'm seeing a little bit of a theme over here. I'm noticing that our clownfish are almost like mini footballs. What do we think? I think if footballs looked this cute, I would be more inclined to play football. We're also seeing the very similar characteristics that all of our other fish have. We're seeing those pectoral fins right over here, one and two. We're seeing our dorsal fin, that top one, our tail fin, and our gill slits. For our clownfish, what's really interesting about them is that their gill slit goes right along this first white stripe over here, which is absolutely incredible. Now, these animals do want to try to blend into their habitat they have an awesome relationship with anemones. If you've ever touched an anemone before, you might feel it's a little bit sticky. What's really cool about that stickiness is that they actually have stinging cells around them. That's how they help kind of catch their food. But for our clownfish that like to swim in and out of them, they have a mucus all over their body that actually helps them swim through that anemone without getting stung. That way they can help the anemone clean itself up, uh, itself up a little bit and the anemone gets cleaned. All right, let's see what other kinds of fish we can look at. Oh my goodness, I think I know who this is. We happen to have some giant sea bass in our aquarium, in our blue cavern habitat, my friends. Again, we're seeing a lot of the same characteristics. We're seeing a pattern, but I'm also seeing another pattern <laughs> all over our sea bass over here. What is it that we are seeing? Hmm. What kinds of colors do we see here? I think they're doing a wonderful job of blending into their habitat. I'm seeing a lot of darker shades of brown, maybe some black here and there, but they're covered in polka dots as well. These are incredible predators of the kelp forest. I know they look really big and slow, but when they are ready to eat, they will lunge for their food really, really fast. We're seeing a very large mouth over here with, what shape do we think these little eyes are? They kind of match the polka dots that are all over its body over here. Little circles. Fantastic, my friends. Maybe let's do, let's take a look at one more fish. Just in case you haven't decided on what kind of uh, fish fan you would like to make. Oh, wonderful picture. This, my friend, is our California sheep head. California sheep's head can live inside of the kelp forest. This is a male. Now, I know this is a male because male sheep heads, they have this kind of a coloration. They have black, pink, and then black again. They're not too circular shaped. I would say if you were to take a rectangle, stretch it out a little bit, and round out the edges like a good block, like a brick, <laughs> I would say that that matches our, uh, I almost called it a Garibaldi, oh my goodness. I match our sheep head perfectly. The Garibaldi and sheep head, they do live in the same habitat. They both do live inside of the kelp forest. Alrighty, my friends. We discovered so many different kinds of fish today, and we, oh, there's our parrotfish coming in to say goodbye. I wanna thank you all so much for joining us today. I had a wonderful time discovering more fish with you and even creating one just on our own. If you do have any more questions, feel free to email us at live at lbaop.org. I do wanna thank my friend Elena as well for helping me out, and we really hope to see you again on our next Aquarium Online Academy. Once again, my name is Tina. Thank you all very much. I hope you have a lovely rest of your day.